I first got introduced to the forecasting tournament by a longtime mentor of mine at Dartmouth, Ben Valentino, who is a political scientist. And he alerted me to an opportunity to forecast with um, the Good Judgment Project. And this was right around the time when I was leaving uh, Baghdad, Iraq, uh, after my second tour uh, there. And I was looking for some way of uh, doing forecasting, because it had been something that I'd been interested in for, for a while, and that's why Ben introduced me to, to the, this idea. And, uh, you know, I, the timing worked out as well. I was able to come back to the United States, and that was right around the time the, the first year of the tournament kicked off, and uh, I just went from there. I think that, bottom line, intellectual curiosity and just a willingness to uh, put in the work and to think hard about specific problems and try to be as objective as possible is what allowed me to make more accurate forecasts than others within the pool. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that, uh, you know, what we did or what I did as an individual is the best possible at forecasting because there, uh, you know, can be so many more improvements, I, I, I think, in terms of how much you know about a specific subject. Uh, you can always improve your level of knowledge. And I think you can always improve, uh, you know, how uh, you're, you're specifically viewing a situation and how that situation could potentially evolve. So having a greater understanding of how humans interact with each other, relate to each other, uh, the political contours of specific situations and events, those are all things that you can gain greater knowledge on and get better at forecasting in. So, uh, yeah, yeah, being open-minded and being open-minded enough to realize that you need to remain open-minded, I think are uh, some of the keys to being, uh, you know, for, for my own uh, forecasting performance. So I really had three general rules when I made forecasts, especially when I made my first forecast on a new question or a situation I had never seen before. So the first thing I would say is, to be a good forecaster, you have to be, uh, you have to hold strong opinions weekly. And what I mean by that is that you do all of your homework up front and you really present a good case for why you feel a certain way on a specific question and defending your probab probabilistic estimate at that point. But when you recognize that somebody else has more information or better information than you, um, having the uh, ability to change your mind swiftly to that new forecast, I think that was one of the keys to why I was able to um, you know, improve my performance over time. Uh, I think mo many people really get stuck on their initial forecast and they fall in love with it and uh, wind up becoming uh, going into a, a defensive crouch when it comes to defending their opinion. Whereas I was uh, on my team sort of notorious for being able to switch from one uh, uh, very uh, hard position all the way to the opposite when I saw new information come up that led me to do that. The second uh, thing is to be willing to put in the homework and to uh, put in the effort to understand a situation, uh, go beyond the Wikipedia page and to go beyond the initial couple of news articles and to really try to understand, you know, what is it, what is it about Boko Haram and their composition that, uh, you know, is uh, allowing them to make the kinds of military gains that, they're, that we're seeing and how fragile or um, stable are those military gains compared to other uh, like organizations. Uh, and to, you know, not just to say, oh, Boko Haram looks like every other organization that I've encountered to this point, but to say, to really try to understand what's going on there and to contextualize that appropriately. Um, and I think the, the third thing is to uh, have in your mind the kinds of psychological and cognitive biases that you could potentially fall prey to and to um, be able to overcome those uh, by, you know, listening to your teammates, by self-critique, and to um, recognize that, you know, whatever uh, forecast and uh, argument that you're putting forward now, um, you should be able to, to alter it or change it or improve it um, in light of new information. So 
um, you know, keeping in mind the cognitive biases that uh, really Im impact and influence and reduce our accuracy and to uh, consciously try to, to de-bias them. I think you could really do two things to uh, become a good forecaster, and one, uh, one is to read, and not just read, uh, say, Phil's book, Super Forecasting, or Dan Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, which I think many of the forecasters who excelled in the tournament um, have read and done. Uh, I also think that, you know, reading, say, histories like The Guns of August or um, uh, books uh, about bureaucracy by James Q. Wilson and others uh, really improves your, your knowledge base and gives you a better context for looking at situations and being able to figure out whether there are any commonalities or patterns there that you can pick up on and that could potentially apply to future situations that look like that. So being well-read is, uh, I think, a contributor to forecasting success. Um, the second thing is to just to practice. Uh, don't get hung up on wrong forecasts that you make initially. You know, don't don't get overly you know uh, sensitive to those results. Um, but to to approach forecasting as something that you can improve on and um, have that uh, growth mindset when it comes to uh, making better forecasts. And so from there, you're able to say, okay. I start at some baseline level, I got some feedback, tells me I, I should improve in X, Y, and Z, and to really make a concerted effort to do that through practice. I think being a forecaster and being a researcher are similar and different. Uh, I think that one of the great things about being a forecaster is that we really weren't constrained by any of the um, kind of customs or sociology around forecasting because we were the ones coming up with that. And so we were able to explore and be very free in how we approached forecasting. Whereas I think uh, research, while you have some freedom in the hypotheses that you are tackling, um, a lot of the methodology and the uh, structure around writing papers and um, peer review and submissions is very much uh, rigid, and uh, you must follow the, the specific process. So I think that, that, that highlights a major difference in forecasting versus uh, uh, doing the research in that the research seemed to be much more process-oriented, um, although obviously there, there is an outcome component to it, whereas when, when we were doing strictly forecasting, uh, really people only cared that we were able to come up with the right uh, answers rather than um, you know, how exactly we, we got there. So um, yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're, different, they're different animals.